dear students welcome this sessions in this today's sessions we are discuss the different type of the fasteners which are used in mechanical systems and that fasteners the different type of the thread is also present for different applications so the number of example is present in our surrounding related with the assembly the two different elements or the two different components by using the fasteners so example the first figure indicate the bridge so bridge may be manufactured by using the two different uh, conditions it's may be like as a welding joints it's may be by using the some fasteners and it's may be the permanent or that the semi permanent then another example is present for the automobile systems for the automobile systems when you going to assemble the two components for assembly of the components so different element is required and by using that elements you can assemble these two parts so these are the typical example is given for the four cylinder engines and the casing of that engine is present in the two parts for the bolt direction and by using the nut and bolt our aim is to assemble that casing so here some again examples for the two wheelers engine so these are the different type of disturbers and the nut and bolt is present so number of application is present for joining the different element by using the various fasteners so we are coming on that so basically the joints are classified in the different based on the different fasteners and the joint is required for assemble the two components are the more than the two components so if the classification is present it is on the one permanent joints and another is the same but more in the permanent joints when you join this two elements it is not disassemble then you can say is the permanent joints so for the permanent joint welding is the one application is given then the rewind is a permanent joint as well as the same permanent joints then the thermal process is required then chemical joint is there and the friction joint here these are the permanent joints when you assemble the two components are the elements are the more than that two then by using this process welding thermal chemical and the friction then the joint is called as the permanent joints then another is the semi permanent joints the semi permanent joint is useful for the assemble and the disassemble the components based on the requirement of that the users so for proper maintenance as well as the proper handling of that the components the semi permanent joint is required and the semi permanent joint is by using the fasteners like as the nut and bolts and in some cases rivet is also present so the for the semi permanent joints we can use the different type of the fasteners so for that fasteners the different thread is present and based on that the thread the working condition is defined it's a maybe permanent or this may be the semi permanent so here in this case the terminology of the thread is present and this terminology suppose this part is the nominal diameter of that the bolt and this is indicate the thread is present on that the element is a bolt and the right hand side figure is indicate the nut of that the bolt so here the major diameter is present and it is measures from the outside diameter of that the bolt then the pitch diameter is mentions then the minor diameter is a minimum diameter of that pitch diameter is a mean diameter of that the circle so and then these are the various parameters present in the thread first the crest it is the top surface of the thread so these are the top surface of the crest this apex you can say is the crest of that the thread then root it is the, it is the bottom surface created by the two adjacent plank of the thread so this inner portions where the minor diameter is present the bottom surface of that the thread is called as the root then another is the depth of the thread it's basically the difference between the crest and the root is a perpendicular distance so between that so is a depth of the thread is obviously is a distance between the root and the crest 
then the flank it is a surface joining the crest and the root so this surface it is a flank for the both side is also the flank is also the flank it is a surface joining the crest and the root then another term is the angle of thread so angle of thread it is the angle included by the flank of the thread so based on this angle the classification of thread is present based on the angle of thread classification is present we are coming on that topic then next is a slope it is the half the pitch of the thread is a half distance of the pitch of the thread so these are the basic uh, terminology of the thread is present then another is a lead it is a distance measured parallel to the axis of the screw which nut will be advanced in one relations of the screw so means if we cut the screw at the one positions and unwound it then the distance traveled by the one nut the height is nothing but the lead of that this screw then the helix angle the helix angle is defined as the angle made by the helix of the thread with a with a plane perpendicular to the axis of the screw the helix angle is related to the lead and the mean diameter of the screw it is also called as the lead angle then based on the this angle of the thread the classification is present in the screw threads so first it the british standard with what bsw threads this is a british standard threads profile and has core space it is a symmetrical v thread in which the angle between the flanks measured in axis plane is 55 degree so this is the 55 degree this thread are found on bolts and screw fastening for special purposes the various proportions of bsw threads is present here and the british standard thread with the fine pitch bsf are used where the grade strength at the root is required these threads are also used for the line adjustment and where the connected parts are subjected to increased vibration as in area and automobile works then the british standard pipe bsp basically it's called as the bsp threads with fine pitch are used for steel and iron pipe and tubes carrying the fluids in external pipe threading the threads are specified by the bore of the pipe so these are the examples of the british standard the edward stays and the b threads the british association threads this is a bsw thread with fine pitch the proportions of the ba threads is the proportion of the ba threads is like as instead of this 55 is a 47.5 degree and these threads are used for instruments and the other precision works so the based on the applications you can use this thread so here the angle of thread is given 55 for the bsw and the for the ba threads this is a 47.5 so this effects of this angle thread is present in the assembly and you can decide which thread is suitable for our applications then another is the american national standard threads these are the american national standard thread is also called as the us or the sailor's thread has flat crest and the root so it's a flat crest is present so this is a flat is not a apex is present and the flat is also present here the flat crest can withstand more rough uses than the sharp u threads and these threads are used for general purpose example the bolts nut screw and the tap hold then the unified standard threads the three countries like great britain canada and united states come to an agreement for common screw thread systems with the include angle of the 60 degree in order to facilitate the exchange of machinery the threads are rounded crest and the root so there is a two difference between the present american national standards and the unified standards in american standard instead of the sharp edges is present at the root and the crest is a flat end is present and for this unified standard states instead of this apex so here the fillet is present so these are the different type of the thread is present then the next thread is the square threads square threads acme threads knuckle threads and the 
but rest is square thread and these are the high efficiency and widely used for the transmissions of the powers in both direction such type of the threads are usually found and the feed mechanisms of the machine tools walls spindles screw jacks etc the square threads are not so strong and v threads but they offer less frictional resistance to motion than the draw distortions the pitch of the square thread is often taken twice that of the bsw there of the some diameter so these are the some proportion is given the p is a pitch and the depth of the thread is nothing but the p divided by 2 then the acme threads so in this acme threads the angle is 29 degree and uh, the distance is present the total depth of this is given p divided by 4 p divided by 2 so is nothing but the p divided by 2 so here it is modification of the square thread it is a much stronger than square thread and can be easily produced these threads are frequently used on screw cutting lathes brass saws cocks and benches vices when used in conjugations with a split nut as on the lead screw of the lathe and the tapered side of the threads facilitated re ready engagement and disengagement of the holes of the nut when it is required so these are the different proportion is present for the acme threads then for the square thread and the acme threads and another for the trapezoid threads some notation is given some designation is given this is already covered in the power screw the for the square sq is mentions 30 is a nominal diameter and 6 is a pitch of that the thread and here for the trapezoidal thread this 40 is indicate the nominal diameter this 14 is indicate the lead and 7 is the p so based on the pitch and this 14 you find out the how many number of start is presents for this screw the always the lead is depends on the pitch so number of starts is depends on the pitch and the leads then we are coming on the next type of the thread knuckle thread so this is a knuckle thread for the knuckle thread it is also as a modification of the square thread it is rounded top and the bottom it can be cast or rolled easily and can not economically be made on the machine these threads are used for rough and ready work they are usually found on the railway carriage coupling hydrants necks of the glass bottles and large molded insulators used in the electrical tubes so for easily assembly and disassembly this type of the knuckle thread is used then the buttress thread it is used for the transmission of power in only one directions the force is transmitted almost parallel to the axis this threads units the advantage of the both square and v thread it has low frictional resistance characteristics of the square thread and have the same strength as that the v thread the spindle of bench wise are usually provided with the buttress thread these various proportions of buttress is given so main advantage and disadvantage is given but disadvantage is, is only transmit the power in one directions then metric threads so these are the proportions of the metric threads it is the indian standard threads i standard thread and is similar to the bsw threads it has an include angle 60 degree so this angle is 60 degree instead of the 55 the basic purpose of the thread this the angle of thread is 60 degree the pitch is distance is present instead of the apex the flat portion is present at the root and the crest so this is a nut and these are the bolt so the assembly of the nut and bolt is given and the the difference major diameters electric pitch diameters minor diameter is present based on this various equation so is usually basically as a indian standard threads is called as the metric threads then the different common type of the fastening is present means how to join the nut and bolts for the different applications how to join the two different element by using this fastener so first is a through bolts 
so here this red color and the blue colors they indicate blue are the green colors they indicate the two element is present and for the two elements the throughout hole is present and between that hole the one side the bolt is present and at the end of that the bolt the nut is present so by using the nut and bolt our aim is to join that bolt then another is a tap bolt in the tap bolt one element is a throughout hole and one element is having the hole and the tap with the same dimensions so there is no throughout hole is present for the another elements just you can use the bolt and insert the bolt from the first element and the tapped portion is present for the another element and the bolt the, this tap portion is like as the nut for that the bolt then the stud for the stud stud applications the same is like as the tap bolts so in the stud applications the bottom surface is a tapped then the throughout the between this bolt there is some shank is present without any threads and the throughout both side of the board the stud uh, the thread is present and by using the nut you can lock either the hold the elements so in the first case nut and bolt is used then second case the only one bolt is used for tight either the fastening the two element in this case the stud is present and for the stud the both side the thread is present and by using the nut you can fasten that the elements these are the basic common type of the screw fastening is present then the different type of the bolt is present the figure a is indicate the standard bolt so in this case the diameter of the shank where the thread is not present this portion is called as the shank the diameter of the shank and diameter of the thread is the same and the core diameter is less than the d so throughout this the diameter is same and this is used in the various fastening application in second case the shank diameter of the bolt is less than the major diameter of the thread the shank diameter of the bolt is less than the major diameter of the thread so the application of this type of the bolt is for the lubrication purpose so means between this gap the lubricant will be flow in the particular directions then another is a, another type of the bolt is present so here again the diameter d, d1 is present means there is a, some hole is present inside this bolt diameter and the another dimension same like as the bolt a but here again the based on the application the throughout hole is present for the lubrications other further the locking systems so these are based on the applications there is a, some modification is present in the bolt shank and the bolt diameters then some are different type of the fastener is present so hexagonal headed bolt this part is shank this part is threaded and is hexagonal head is present for this fasteners then the square headed bolt so instead of the hexagonal the square head is present then cap headed bolts so in this cap headed bolt so these are the threaded part is a shank and here instead of the circular cross section here the rectangular cross section is present and end will be the cap so means when you insert this bolt in particular positions so this portion is locked initially and then just you can insert the nut in this fastener so the main advantage of this cup headed bolt is is there is no need to hold the cap you just fix between that supports then the cylindrical headed bolt so here the throughout cyl cylindrical presence for this bolt and by using the pin half portion of the pin is insert in this head and the half portion of this pin is insert in the another elements is a locking conditions is present so based on this pin you can lock the bolt in that positions and then the t headed bolts so t headed bolt is slim like as a cup headed bolt here only 
the rectangular head is present for this bolt and is the again square is present so is again locked in that particular slot then the eye bolts so for the eye bolts is some circular ring is present at the end of that the bolt and this eye bolt is basically used for the lifting applications so example the electric motor even it is the lifting eye bolts both are the same the best but based on the load conditions the dimension is vary the lifting eye bolt same thing is present so the sharpness is present for provide the strength then uh, is about the nuts different type of the nuts so is a hexagonal headed nut so this is a hexagonal is present and between that nut, the thread is present for the internal threads the inner circle is a full and outer circle is a three fourth then the square headed bolt nut sorry the square headed nut is a square is present the some dimension is present then the flange nut is present so here is it like as the collar is present for the hexagonal head bolts either nut either the square headed nut is a some collar is present for uniformly distribute the pressures on that this surface instead of the use the washer this flange is present as at the end of that nut then cup nut or the dome nut this is basically used for the aesthetic purpose so means the end of this nut is fixed means from that there is no throughout hole is present so means bolt is not coming from this direction so it's basically is for the aesthetic purpose so these are present on the handle of the tools handle of the cycles other the gym, gym mechanisms so is a for the aesthetic purpose then the capstan nut the caps for the capstan nut so is a cylindrical nut is there and between that cylindrical perimeters the difference hole is present is maybe the four is maybe the six and this maybe the eight depends on the dimensions of that the nut so for the capstan nut the particular spanner is required and by using that spanner it will be removed and assembled the other is the ring nut so basically this ring nut is present at the cycle sprocket for assemble the spindle between these two bearings so by using the ring nut so again the typical spanner is required for the ring nut there is a, some slot is present this and you can insert this spanner between this slot and it will be used then another different type of the screw is present the screw is also required for the some various applications the dimension of the screw is obviously less than the bolt and the screw is like this the cap screw with the difference like these are the various cap screws present the first is a hexagonal screw so hexagonal head is present then second is a twister screw so here by using the screw driver you can lock either the unlock the screw so is a throughout the slot is present then the button screw so these are the button screw here the typical type of the screw driver used and the end of this head is like as the dome then the flat screw so here the slant is present for this so means this screw when you insert this screw in that element there is no head is present and and the top side of this screw is parallel with that the elements so main advantage of this flat screw is proper aesthetic and there is no part is coming outside that the elements then the hexagonal socket head is not a hexagonal is a hexagonal flatted socket head so here is a flat end is present and by using the allen key you can handle this bolt the cap screw with the head engage internally and form the end face have the following advantages such cap screw can be installed in confirm spaces and counter bore holes the results is better appearance for the product they reduce the overall dimensions of the products resulting in compact constructions 
there is a convenience in cleaning or wiping of the surfaces of the product so these are the different advantages present then the set screw the basically set screw is used for adjusting either the locking the different elements so here typical set screw is present on the flat point set screw a then b is a dog point set screw c is again the cone point set screw d is again the hanger point set screw and v is the cut point so this is a flat point this is the end of this screw is the flat the flat point is used when the lateral force which tends to displace one part with respect to another is randomly applied it is also used when the part with tapped hole into which the set screw is screwed does not have sufficient thickness then another is the dog point set screw so is a typical again end is present and the head is like as a square head the dog point is used when the lateral force which tends to displace one part with respect to the other is large also the part which is held should have sufficient thickness to accommodate a cylindrical hole called the dog point so basically this type of the screw is used for lock the tool in the two jaws then the cone point is a cone is a typical angle of this cone is a 90 degree the cone point is used <coughs> when the lateral force is small also the part which the tapped hole into which the skid screw is screw does not have sufficient thickness the part being held is provided with the conical holes then the hanger points so for the hanger points the hexagonal head is present then by using the allen bolts allen screw allen set you can operate it and the end is like as the shape the hanger point has a smaller tip it is used when the lateral force is large also the part which is held should have sufficient thickness to accommodate a cylindrical hole hanger point ensure good locations of the parts then the cut point so for the cut point so it is difference between the cone point and cut point so cone point is extruded and the cone point is cutting the bolt inside the portions the cut point is used when the part is being held cannot be drilled or hardened it is also used to transmit the force to steel ball or the spherical parts the point of the set screw is generally hardened so basically this all set screw is useful for uh, uh, lock the proper locations of the different tools the various applications for these may be for the power screw it may be used for the transmission gear systems it may be used for fix the tool in the check of the bolt etc then the some uh, locking devices is there for proper locking of the fasteners in some cases maybe the internal force is more than the thread transmitting force the, in that cases you can use the two bolt two nuts for hold that positions hold that the elements so for the locking devices is maybe the one either the two element you use this is the first case jam nut or the lock nut so the jam nut either the lock nut having the different dimension is present so is a regular nut is there then you can use the another lock nut what will happen when if you twist sorry if you rotate this lock nut in clockwise directions and it is also and the proper friction is present between these two surfaces of the nut and the lock nut and due to that friction it's fixed that particular poses there is no chance to lose the such bolt so these are the different typical application is present these are the lock nuts having the bolt dimensions so in this case lock nut is in outer side and the regular nut is inside so in this case lock nut is inside and the regular nut is present the outside these are the different cases for the arrangement of the jam nut either the lock nut then the castel nut in the castel nut this dimensions of this bolt and for the castel nut there is some groove is present at the end of this castel nut and some hole is required for the bolt positions 
the based on the accuracy of this assembly this castle groove is present with the some holes if this hole and this groove is parallel in one direction then you can insert the pin and the pin is useful for locking the movement of the castle nut so like this so you can insert the split pin between the hole of the castles and the between the hole of the bolt then the split nut for the split nut the nut having the this high dimensions and there is one sock cut is present for the nut and by using the cap screw either the set screw this portion is a threaded and this portion is only the drill is present when the split nut is inserted in the bolt by using at the particular position by using the cap screw what will happens the gap between these two cut is decreases and the thread of the nut is overlap on the thread of the bolt and the maximum friction is present and due to that maximum friction there is minimum chances to lose this nut from that positions the same is like as a saw nut in the saw nut same cut is present and the glue is present <coughs> then the locking with the spring washers so here the regular bolt is present regular nut is present so instead of the flange nut you can use the spring washer the initial tension is present for the spring washer at the end of this two spring washer is twisted when you apply the forces from the both sided it will be flat and it's present in the one play so due to that continuous spring stiffness the nut and the washer is locked and is a permanent locking system is present then again is a locking with the set screw here the same thing like as a split nut for the split nut cut is present to so instead of the cut here the hole is present the tapped hole is present and by using the set screw either the cap screw you can insert this and by using the cut screw the cut of the screw is like as a thread angle of that the bolts then when you insert this thread then the again the external frictional force is present on the thread and this nut will be locked These are the different locking arrangement is present for the number of bolts.